you can create a market. Like big businesses do this all the time. Apple did this. Apple created a market that didn't exist. You know, I mean, Apple sold more in AirPods than Twitter's gross revenue, Netflix's gross revenue, like, you know, unbelievable. And I'm, I might be misquoting that, but I'm getting the gist right. And before that, there was no market for AirPods. Like people spent $10 on headphones, 30 if you were insane, $200 if you were a Dr. Dre fan. Nobody, but and dude, now everybody has True. to, have, you can create a market and we just need to acknowledge our power there. Sorry to interrupt. No, 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 absolutely. And that's, that's, you're a very good interrupter, by the way. Thanks, Ralph. Yeah, yeah. It's a skill I've been cultivating since childhood. (laughs) No, I think it's, uh, no, you're absolutely right. And I think that's how you have to think. You're like, oh, well, you know, I'm a director of marketing. I'm a, I'm a business owner. I'm not an Apple. Mm. Well, I beg to differ. Actually, I think you can learn lessons from the apples of the world, from the athletic greens of the world, from the Sephoras of the world, from, you know, some of the examples that, that Meta used were major brands like Allergan, which has Botox and, you know, a couple of other brands, like these big brands are doing something right. Yeah. And they're not just, do you know who Blue Apron is? I do. That nobody, are you, here's the thing that pisses me off about Blue Apron. I understand when you send me meals, like freshly send you cooked meals and then I take them out and I put them in the microwave or I put it on the stove and then I get to eat that meal. Blue Apron <laughs> sends me the ingredients to a meal that I then have to cook. <laughs> it's like, you do the hard work. We'll do the easy, you know, the easiest part of this whole thing, like going to the store and putting it all in a bag. Yeah, we're going to do that part and we're going to sell it to you. But they they blew up, they exploded, and they turned it into a date night, and it's this big, you know, their their USP is, and it's specific for people who like to cook. But it's it's such a it's such a phenomenal example of a business and a market that didn't exist until they created it. They created the problem, and then they solved it. Yeah, yeah, uh, it, it, you know, it's a category king. Yeah, and as a great book. Oh man, I'm going to forget the name of the book. But anyway, Google Category King, the book. And we'll leave links in the show notes on this. And it's exactly, I think it's bigger. Oh man, I forget the name of the book. Play bigger. Play bigger. That's it. It's exactly all about this. How do you do it? You create your market. Mm. You create, you know, your own blue apron. And I'm not saying go out there, you know, maybe, maybe your first time in doing this, but you know, you should have some, at least some experience. Uh, my, my point is, is like a lot of these businesses that they talk about and play bigger, uh, yeah, had previous experience in business and were really, really knew what they were doing. Salesforce is a great example of that. Uh, you know, obviously Apple is a great example of that. Blue Apron is an example of that. They use a lot of different examples. It's a great book. Uh, I've had my team read it. We've talked about it. How do you actually do it though? This is sort of the advertising and getting the word out there part of it. So this mm-hmm. is sort of an inflection point. And a big opportunity in the market right now that we are seeing and then we're also seeing for our individual customers that we're testing this with not even, I wouldn't even say testing it with custom. We've been doing it for like over a year now and it's absolutely taking things from hundreds of thousands of dollars in ad spend to millions of dollars per month in ad spend by doing this very thing, which we're going to get into in just a second. But um, I should say that uh, for us, we, you know, we do have a, a download of this and a, a lead magnet that you can get over at tier11.com forward slash uh, brand building. That's tier11.com forward slash brand building. We'll leave that link in the show notes as well. I'll actually show you a case study where we actually did this exact thing. Let's get into it. So we've reached uh, an interesting point right now. So we've got the economy that's under pressure. I know you think the sky is falling. Uh, I don't think the sky is falling. Probably will fall sometime in 2025, though, <laughs> the way that things are looking. Uh, economy is under pressure. The ad ecosystem is changing. Policies, you've got privacy, you've got new platforms that are coming out that involve a hell of a lot of AI, a lot of machine learning. There's less for media buyers technically to do. So the ad ecosystem is definitely evolving. And then there's an opportunity here uh, to increase focus on value and like marketing budgets, especially now because maybe the economy is under pressure, marketing budgets are definitely under the microscope. So what we're seeing is a reallocation or sort of a shift 
in spend from pure bloody red ocean conversion ads to top of funnel brand awareness consideration and awareness types of ads and blending the two together. And that's really what this is all about. And Meta calls it full funnel. Not necessarily in love with that term, but I think it is a big, uh, it, it, it's one of the biggest things I think in, in media buying that we've experienced in the last year. We didn't even realize we were doing it, mm. custom, which is crazy. So what Don't happens you love though- when you catch yourself doing something right. And you're like, yeah. Oh. Like, huh, how smart I am. That actually makes sense. Yeah. Jeez. Maybe I you should know? do this for a living. Right. You know what? I mean, we have so many accounts that we deal with. Like, this was happening in accounts. I didn't even realize it was happening. Like, the media buyers are doing it on their own. Yeah. Dude, which that's, is even that, better. That's the thing about best practices, they're generally intuitive, right? Like, it's generally the thing that somebody who does it for a long enough period of time would, would naturally default to. And it's only like bureaucracy and uh, micromanagement that veers them off of course. So because y'all are strategist led, which is the right way an agency should be led, by the way, you end up with natural best practices. And then this is the thing that always pisses me off. The, then somebody else comes along and just defines it better. And they get to look like they invented it. And I'm like, I've been doing this the whole time, but you named it and came up with the graphic. And so now all of a sudden you you own this shit and I have yeah. to pretend like we follow you. But yeah, I, I, I think that that's an important note, uh, especially for CMOs and director of marketing. If you're not strategist led in an ecosystem like this, you're going to get into a lot of trouble because the people doing the work should be the ones making those very specific decisions. Yeah. Um, it's and, and hopefully this example lands properly, but I have some family that are in the US Special Forces. And they talk very often about um, leadership from the front. Like if you're in, if you're actually your feet on the ground, you should be the one making the calls, not whoever's in the, you know, air conditioned bunker looking at satellite photos, because they just don't see it. And, and very often, that's how businesses are run. I had the really cool opportunity to uh, speak with a member of the U.S. Special Forces uh, at a charity dinner. Um, really interesting guy. He's he's you know a combat veteran, been on the most amazing mission. Things are truly unbelievable. But I believe I believe every word, obviously. And uh, 